Hi, Tea Quilters. It's T with Tea Quilts, and today is Wednesday, January 12th, 2022, and it is 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're here today for a one hour live chat. We also chat on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for two hours, and we actually do a live sewing chat. And I know it looks like we're going to do a live sewing chat here, but I am in the process of sewing some pieces, and I just didn't want to clean it all up. <laughs> so we're going to try to work around it in this chat tonight. Uh, if you got any questions, concerns, <laughs> uh, pop them into the comment box. Also, if you just want to say hi to everybody, you can do that as well. I'll just be reading names uh, as I go down the list tonight. So welcome, everybody. Hope you Hopefully you've had an enjoyful, had a joyful uh, beginning of the week thus far, and uh, it will continue. <laughs> so. so we'll just wait a minute for people to come on into the chat. I came in about a minute and a half early today. And even though we're not um, sewing today, or I don't plan to sew, but you know I can. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to sew a couple of pieces while we wait here. Um, I've had a long week. <laughs> so, and look like I'm going to have an even longer rest of the week. So, I'm trying to utilize every minute that I can. <laughs> And I'm hungry. <laughs> I am so hungry. My husband cooked right before I came in here. And I'm like, if I eat now, I probably get ready to go to sleep. So I didn't eat before I came. So let's see. It's 7 o'clock now. Let's see who's all here. Um... First question, have you ever put your phone charger <laughs> or put any of your devices, plug the card into the device, come back hours later, and the other end of the card wasn't in the power source? <laughs> That's how my day is going. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I was trying to get everything charged beforehand. Uh, we got Teresa McCormick's here. Uh, Maxie Doodle, Vicki Lemire, Darlene Crosby, Mary is here, my niece Lisa is here, Quilt Gal, Francis Jackson, Michael Piccarelli, hello Mike. <laughs> he talking about Kevin, talking about Kevin has worked. Uh, he's stressing. He has worked four days in a row. Laughing out loud. Yeah, that's true. Kevin won't probably won't be in here tonight. Every time I say Kevin's not going to be here tonight, and all of a sudden he pops in. So um, we'll see if it holds true tonight. Vivian Calvi, Debbie, Elizabeth, Joyce Hernandez, Tiffany of Tiffany's Quilting Life. She says she has a headache, so I'll be kind of monitoring the chat and listening, but not much reading of the chat because um, it's killing my eyes. So I do understand that. So take care of yourself, Tiffany. Prayers for you for healing as well. Dee Dee Hansen, Phyllis G, Lietta Bryant, Stephanie of Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter. Uh, Vivian is also reminding people to hit that thumbs up button. Thank you, Vivian. Remo JS here also saying hit that thumbs up uh, Joyce Hernandez same message <laughs> Susan T is here Elizabeth Hewitt oh she says her daughter goes into surgery tomorrow morning so add her daughter to your prayers as well um, Judy Judy is here <laughs> Joyce Burrell, or Burrell, she said, um, no, she's just saying hello to everyone. Melinda C. is here, Janice Miller, uh, Ella Odom, and Wanda J. says hello. 
Hey, Wanda, welcome to the chat. Uh, Sue GSD is here. Great evening to Grill. Hello, all. <laughs> Kay Pennington says, Good evening from California. I'm knitting a UFO while listening. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. She's sending prayers to Tiff and Elizabeth. Yes. Thank you. Joyce says, I cleaned the AccuQuilt dye and works great now. I told you. If you're using a dye excessively, I, I know that because I cut kits sometimes and I also um, use them a lot myself. And I know that I will go a long time trying to avoid the big old clean out. And when I do have to clean it out, I mean, I have to do thorough cleaning. Um, so I'm glad that that worked for you, the cleaning. And Wanda says she's from Texas. <laughs> so yeah, so I've been so busy that uh, Wednesday Live has kind of snuck up on me. So I'll just tell you what I've been doing. <laughs> um, I don't know, some of you all are over in the Facebook group, so you already are aware of what's going on. Hi, Cynthia Shay. Um, I, Kevin and I met on Sunday. We cut 20, we cut originally 24 kits and then it went to 22 because I combined uh, some of the, um, what do you call them? The 15 block kits, because everybody was mostly ordering the 30 block kits. There were a few people that only wanted 15. So I reduced the number of 15 kits that I had. We went live on Facebook. I don't know if you all have seen that video of us cutting. Well, I had already had pre-orders from when I showed the fabric and said what I was gonna cut from it, people had ordered. And then when the people saw the video, I sold the majority of those kits. And then what didn't sell ended up selling from the Facebook group. So if you're not a member of T Quilts LLC Facebook group, that would be the time to go over there. We are technically out of kits. Um, I had some other fabrics, eight of them are the same. Four of them come from kit one and kit two. Um, they are the same so if you already have purchased kit one or kit two you don't want to buy the kit here that i'm about to show you i'm just showing people that i can make four kits from fabric this is just an, a sample of the fabrics so i can make four kits from these fabrics so and then this is just the other side so that's one this is two just showing fabric three four i guess i'm gonna have to get back on uh go buy more fabric but i don't have time right now <laughs> five this is six number seven this is eight this is actually an encora i just added it in i needed another fabric <laughs> nine i don't know what number i'm at for real for real i think that's right here is 10. <laughs> this one's 11. 12. 13. i think this one's ankara as well 14. and 15. So those are the fabrics that I have that I can cut a kit from. So if anybody is interested in that, I can do that. I had opened it up on my website on Monday. By Monday night, I had closed stuff, okay? <laughs> they sold fast. I was surprised at how fast the actual kits themselves sold. So it took us uh, about seven hours to make those kits i had every i had done a whole day of prep work before going we cut these at kevin's house so i did a whole day of prep work before even going to kevin's house trying to make sure that we were successful and i didn't think we would get them all done in a day but kevin is a beast and he wouldn't let me stop until we had it all done so yeah it's amazing so uh let me see who else has come in and then I'm gonna Elizabeth's asking, how do you clean the
the AccuCool dies. I use a die pick and uh, needle nose pliers is what I use. Uh, what you use in jewelry making because they have a better grip. I wouldn't try using tweezers because I have tried and every time I go to pull the threads out because they're jammed in, the thread comes out of the tweezers because it's only a little thread and the tweezers aren't strong enough. So I use needle nose pliers and then the die pick that you can get from AccuQuilt. And people have said they use dental pick, anything that, that's like that. I remember when they first uh, made the go in the studio. That's how come I have them. I never bought them. They used to include them with your order and I don't know if they still do that to this day when you buy your die cutting machine. But that's how you clean it. Maybe I got some videos that I've been recording. I just haven't had time to edit. And then the video for the butler. I had to order an adapter to because it's got that little bitty thing that won't fit into my computer. So I ordered what I thought was the correct adapter so that I could put it into my computer. Well, it won't even go into my computer. It came today after waiting a whole week for that. It's the wrong thing. So I think I'm just going to go into Walmart, take my little GoPro camera and show them what I got and what I need and see if somebody in the actual store can help me. If I got to go to Best Buy, I got to drive all the way across town. So I'm not going to order anything else online that's not going to be the right thing, just wasting my money. Janet Mackerel's here, Nancy Gus, uh, Kathy from Kathy Quilts and Crafts is here. <laughs> uh, yes, Nancy, I did really good. Uh, Julie Quilts is here. <laughs> hey, Julie. Phyllis G. Tucker is here of Tucker Sewing and Quilting. Darlene Crosby is welcoming everybody joining. Thank you so much. <laughs> Maddie Barnum's here. She says, I love all the fabrics. Uh, Lenora Baptiste is here. Says, Good evening, T and Quilt family. Um, Stephanie is also reminding you guys to hit that thumbs up. Thank you. Sharon Lewis is here. So she's still at work, but happy to catch you in time. Yes. <laughs> People still doing prayers for Tiffany. Sweet. And Julie's saying, I can't wait for my fabric. So excited. Yes, everything that was ordered and paid for, and even some that wasn't paid for, I went on ahead and shipped it all out on... Um, Monday and no, I didn't ship on Monday because I did all orders and packing. So I sent orders on Tuesdays and uh, today, which is Wednesday. It feel like I've had a gazillion days in this week. I've done so much. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I even cut some extra kits for people because I ran out and I cut some already. That's how come I got some of fabric. I just was able to show you that I had just laying out because I even cut extra kits. Hi, Kimelina. Uh, Vanessa Brown's here. Um, Judy Smith is here. She says, from the Disney Epcot Center. That's my favorite park. <laughs> Epcot, I like that one. Helena Carter is here. Shinonji Roberts. Maria Mayer. And I'm trying to get all the shout outs out. Sheila Willis. And I think that's it for now. So welcome everybody that's just coming in. Um, in addition to the kits things, when you get them, I say on the paper, shuffle the fabrics. And most quilters are gonna know what that means, but I decided I better go ahead and do a video. <laughs> so I did record a video like early this morning, I started about one o'clock doing a video series on these blocks. And so I was showing people how you would shuffle the stack so that you can sew everything back together. And uh, T is asking all the kits sold out. All the original kits are sold out. I sent you an email in response to your question to me. You sent me an email and I responded back today and I haven't heard back from you, but um, I was, I have these fabrics that I showed, just showed. If you missed it, go back and watch the beginning of the video. But it's also the same fabrics that's in that box on the 
um, picture that you commented on when I said I was going to the mail or the post office and then I showed a picture if anybody wanted a kit made from these fabrics to let me know and I guess I'll be you know some of the stuff that I'm doing I'm trying to have like a stash of stuff to sell kind of like when I have strip sticks and wood presses and stuff like that like jelly rolls <laughs> but um I'm having a difficult time keeping the stash on these so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to order more fabric and make more kits later. Hi, Robin Boyd. So, um, that's kind of where we are. Um, what I have done is I have taken a kit for myself <laughs> and I have sewn the blocks together. And so this is just one block with the five different fabrics. And as I was stating, um, when you cut up some of these fabrics, like this fabric here is always gonna look the same, but this fabric here is gonna change every time it's popping into a box. This fabric's gonna change. Uh, so is this one, and even this one changed a little bit. Um, so when you start putting them together, it looks like you've got more than um, the, the number of fabrics that you started with. And here's just another block. And I just haven't, uh, taking the time to lay these out now that's the next step is to figure out if i want to put them together like this if i do that then i won't have to worry about seams in the row across if i put them together like this i can also turn it uh upside down should be like this i guess Wait a minute, let me look at it. <laughs> I'm trying to do it backwards. I need to turn it towards me. So if you're right here and you turn this upside down, then I would be sewing these units. I could sew these units together where I'm sewing back here. You could even turn it a quarter turn. Eventually you're gonna have some seams you're gonna have to match up so it doesn't really matter much but you could keep rotating around and put these together however you like. So I just need to lay these out and see if I wanna do just random, put all the blocks in order and just keep them all upright or do I wanna mix them in so that the big blocks are not all the way across the top of the quilt all the time, like if I did it here like this. Then the big block would always be up at the top. These would always be in the bottom. Then the next row would be these big blocks again. If I rotate them, then the big block is up here and the big block is down there. So you get to play with the rotation a little bit. So that's what I got to figure out. <laughs> that's the stage I'm at. But all my blocks are done on my quilt. I actually, uh, when I was cutting more fabric, I had to I had to get some more fabric anyway, so I went ahead and cut me six more extra blocks, and I got six extra blocks in my quilt. So my quilt's going to be a six by six instead of a five by six if you bought a kit of 30. Carissa Renninger is here. Hi, Carissa. Uh, she's asking me what quilting design will I use on these. I don't, because this is going to be a busy quilt, I didn't separate with sashing because I just wanted to get something done to show people what the fabrics look like all mixed up. And uh, I, I don't know, I'm just going to probably do some overall because I was looking at my scooch over too. I want to put it on my frame, but I've had a very long day of uh, hurry up and wait <laughs> for somebody and not making decisions have taken up my whole day and i've tried to explain to people uh, i'm doing this as a what i'm doing is a favor and it's not where i make my money and has taken up my whole day and i have nothing well i have something to show for it because i did all the designing i came in here because i got stressed and i started sewing more pieces to bonnie hunter's mystery um yeah, it's been a real stressful day for me. And people think that because they order something, um, and this is not, not the kits. I'm not talking about the kits, but people order something that's $75. And, 
and you they feel like they can take my whole day. $75 only pay for like a couple of hours of my time. I make more money doing other stuff. <laughs> and the stuff I do, and I'm not motivated by money, and that's what people don't tend to understand. So I, I don't like being threatened, and I don't like, like, you know, they'll take their business somewhere else. It's like, okay. <laughs> so it's been one of those kind of crazy days. But uh, I was trying to get my scooch over two on the frame. And I could not uh, get it loaded because I got all this other stuff spread out that I thought I would have put up by now. And I was uh, a little bit so irritated that I was scared to even do the work that I needed to do to clean that area up because I felt like I would mess up because I wasn't in my right head space at the time. So I'm hoping that by the time this is over, I'm going to look at a little TV because this is really my television night on Wednesdays. <laughs> I'm going to look at a little television and I'm going to probably be up all night trying to get this order uh, that I have done so I can get it over and done with. But um, I'm one of those people that are not highly motivated by money because what I do, I do because I love it. And if I'm not loving it, then I don't want to do it. So I'm a I'm a totally different breed. <laughs> So I don't even know what I'm going to stitch on the scooch over. I thought I, I found an elephant panel I thought that I was going to use. But the more I look at these fabrics, I just think that they are so busy that any busy quilting is either going to get lost or take over the uh, designs in the material. So I think I'm just going to use some kind of geometric uh, all over design, DD, in answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, it's been one of them days. <laughs> Woo wee. <laughs> um, let's see. Next question. Anyone have advice on cutting one inch strips accurately? I'm going to use the sashing and I'm nervous. Buy an AccuQuilt one inch strip die. <laughs> uh, number two, um, when I cut um, strips, like if I'm using my rulers, what I do, if I'm cutting one inch strips and I've got a six inch wide ruler, instead of cutting one inch strip, what I do is I put that ruler on there and I'll cut a six inch strip. So once I've squared up the end and then I'll cut a six inch strip and then I'll back off of that strip and cut a five inch strip and then back off again. And I'm using that same edge that I squared up at first, cut a four inch strip. Then I cut a three inch strip, then a two inch strip, and now you're left just cutting that final last one inch strip. Instead of cutting all little one inch strips where only one inch is under your ruler, you start big and then work your way back. That's my advice. <laughs> uh, Shirley Kessinger says she's late because she fell asleep. But here now, I did have to go take a nap. I was so irritated. I, I guess at one point I was even upset, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so irritated. I did go take a nap. Uh, Winfrey Baptiste says, a kid of 30, what's the cost uh, with shipping? Now, you know I cannot tell you how much shipping is going to cost to TNT because it's always different. And these packages, when they ship, they are 14 by 14 by 1 inch. Um, they are a different size. I know I was surprised at how much it cost me to pay shipping to ship to California from Missouri. I'm like, do they take a, a the CIA, uh, CIA must take them over there or something? Because it was ridiculous. So what I do is I tend to do like for USA people, I tend to do just a, a round figure shipping. And then, because uh, I don't know where people are going to be shipping from. So I think I had one person in Illinois that I shipped to. It might have been, that was probably Julie. I think hers ended up being the cheapest, and California was just ridiculous. It was just crazy. But it was one of those oddball sizes, and uh, they go by size of your package when you're doing priority mail because it wouldn't fit into the standard priority mail packages. So when, I, when you have to create your own, they go by your size. <laughs> so I can't tell you that until I pack something up. Can someone tell me what is going on with Tiffany? I missed it. She has a 
headache right now that I'm aware of. Barbara Polk says, uh, hi to everybody. She's coming in. Welcome. <laughs> hey, Sue. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Craft with Love 55 says, Greetings, T and all. I know I have been missing a lot due to death and getting sick. I had to take care of myself. On that note, it's good to be here. Hey, welcome back. I know who you are. <laughs> um, and somebody is even telling Julie to put a five pound weight on the end of the ruler. And what T said. Yeah, I always back off of the cutting when it's really tiny. Instead of making one inch strip cuts every time, start with six, five, four, three, two, one. If you've got an eight inch ruler, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> so I never cut um, those like that. Elizabeth says, anything across the Mississippi is three times the freight for me. Yes. It is so crazy. I don't understand what the heck that's all about. I, I even in another place that's expensive to ship to from Missouri is North Carolina. Now I haven't shipped a whole lot to South Carolina, and, but I so I can't remember. But North Carolina is also a beast. I'm like I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> so I try to do like average shipping. So. Uh, and then I don't have to worry about charging different prices and all of that and trying to go back to people and get more money if it's not enough. So I just try to do an average shipping. And I add shipping and handling anyway because, like, if I'm doing, especially when I'm doing my own packaging and stuff like that. And this um, this kit was a lot of extras. I had to buy corrugated cardboard bags to put them in, stickers and ink, um, my my packaging labels is that all of that stuff is like incorporated in the cost of your products that you buy and vicky says most everything is trucked up to upper michigan damali j is here hey damali and that's what i normally do is flat rate boxes but these this was an oddball size. It wouldn't fit into any other priority mailboxes. That's what I try to do is try to use a lot of those. But sometimes it doesn't work out because this was, like I said, it was 14 by 14 by 1 inch. They don't have a box that size that I'm aware of. <laughs> I, you know, sometimes they get new stuff online and I might miss it or something. But they didn't have it for, for what I was aware of. So yeah, so that's that. I did get some mail, so let's talk about mail. This came from Dee Dee Hansen. Beautiful little scenery card, and it's so fitting with <laughs> what's inside. And it's a, a charitable card that she sent, too. That's really nice. Um... Dear T, these are some stamp designs, the ones that can be used as a 2.5 inch center of a four star general block or tropical palm tree, unicorn, lighthouses, house in the woods, Adobe church at night, sewing machine, heart, taxi cab. The last three are too big. I sent them for fun. <laughs> and uh, they are painted with fabric paint. I colored them with in intense ink pencils and paint it with matte medium then i iron them and they are permanent okay so so she colors with intense ink and then she used the matte medium and then she ironed them and they are permanent but what she showed in the four star general group is just awesome she says, glad to provide any of these to the four-star generals ladies if I know which they want and their names and addresses. Sincerely, Dee Dee Hansen. Okay, so I just wanted to show you. These are not the colored ones, <laughs> the ones that she colored in. But they're, oops, she received some stamps. And so she has been stamping them with stamp ink here. And then she paints them with ink tense pencils, which 
We've been, oh, some of them are really tiny. <laughs> Pretty horse. And uh, they're just gorgeous. She colored in, and even on some of them, she colored in. This is the lighthouse. She colored in the background, like made a little oval or circle. This is the cottage. This is a castle. I'm just showing them here so people can see them because they look so pretty. Sewing machine. And she has them on uh, muslin. This is a great way to use up your muslin scraps too. That's upside down right there. <laughs> Great way to use up your muslin scraps. This is a car. Trying to get these closer to the camera so you can see them better. Ooh, that's a pretty bird. Another bird. Oop. Trying to get my fingers out the way and like adobe houses or or community or something or something <laughs> very pretty so yeah but those are gorgeous dd thank you so much for sending those i just went to the she mailed this to my house i had it saturday but i like i wanted to share it on um wednesday because it's not such a long video and um, I went to the post office today, got this in the mail, <laughs> and let me, oh, these are the wrong scissors. Those are not paper and fabric scissors. I use these Fiskars for both paper and fabric. Whoops. <sighs> okay. We don't have a name outside from Tennessee. It's got T on here. Oh, it was holidays. Happy holidays. It says, wishing you the splendor of the season, Terry Black. <laughs> well, thank you. It's got a note in here. I'm not going to read this. <laughs> Except that I'm going to read this first sentence for sure. This is typewritten because I can't read my own handwriting, so I don't expect others to, ha. Huh? And I am exactly the same. I used to take notes for, in class when I was in college, and then like four or five hours of the next day, I can't remember what the heck I wrote. I can't read it. My writing is so bad. It's ridiculous. And she's just saying that this is a gift and appreciation for all your tutorial tips and chats. Oh, well, maybe I will read this because it's very helpful. She says, You're recent, you recently offered the most brilliant tip. For example, cut scraps for a specific project. I was feeling totally overwhelmed by scraps. The project tips make so much sense. And why in the world did not I think of it? Uh, regarding your comments about AccuCool waste, I agree and have started using my dyes more. Cutting fabric I've already spent money on is smarter than staring at it. Ha. Huh? Thanks again, and best wishes for a happy, healthy 2022. Well, thank you, Terry. This letter means a whole lot because I have a supply of two and a half inch squares, and I fill these containers, and once they're filled, it's like if you're trying to continue to cut scraps so you got somewhere to put them because all of my scrap bins are full, so I have no place to put in, in the scrap bins. I have no place to put in my pre-cut squares. So I have been for the last few years have been cutting projects and just putting projects up. And that's kind of how I started selling kits. It was like uh, I buy fabric or don't have any place to put it. It's like, okay, we're just going to make kits with it. And so I've kind of accidentally fallen into making kits. And uh, it's a lot easier to do a project. Like when I come in here, if I don't have a project to do uh, for uh Saturday sewing chat, I can always just pull one of these containers up here and start sewing on a kit. So thank you so much, Teresa, 
I mean, Terry for the, um, for the acknowledgement, because I think that's a whole lot better. And then you're a lot more apt to use those scraps than it is if you just cut, uh, from, okay. I thought something else is tape. She tapes like I do. <laughs> we make sure that things are not going to come apart. Okay. Wow. It's amazing how many different uh, African prints are out. <laughs> and like I told you all in a previous um, live chat, I, you, we have a store, a quilt store here that sells African fabrics, but they have the same 20 fabrics again and again and again. And I got tired of looking at them. So that's why I started buying my own. Um, but this is really cool. Ooh, it's pretty. This one here, a stripe. You see the exact colors, <laughs> brown, black, gold, and white, kind of a yellow gold, like, um, yeah, it's more like a gold color, mustard, dark mustard, Dijon mustard. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> and this one's really pretty too. Oh, wow. It's gorgeous. I'm looking in it because sometimes they look different. And the uh, two great geometric prints. Very nice. So I put these in my personal stash. <laughs> I don't, if I'm gifted, gifted fabric, I keep it in my personal stash. I don't use it in any kit, so you won't see it. <laughs> but thank you, Terry. I appreciate that so much. That's really awesome. Really, really nice of you. So I appreciate that. Uh, good night, June. They're talking about, I think I'm going all the way back to when I was showing. Um, um, uh, when I was showing Dee Dee's uh, little squares, I think people were saying that those were pretty. <laughs> I'm trying to go back into the chat. Hold on, guys. I remember that one. Darlene's reminding people to hit the thumbs up button. Thank you, Darlene. Denise So Patch 33 is here. Good night, June Hansen. She's leaving. And uh, people are saying that they're really cute. Those little um stamps that uh, Didi did and then I'm sure they're going to run right into the fabric. Fabric is beautiful. Uh, ooh, the second one with the green. I'm, girl, Stephanie, <laughs> this girl oodles anything lime green and it's got it in there, girl. I love lime green too. When they came out with lime green as the motor color of the year, I was happy. <laughs> Celia Swain just came in. Awesome idea. Love it. They were talking about the letter from Terry now. Good night, Joyce. So yeah, so like I said, it's uh, 7.36. I don't have a whole lot because I've been working. I worked with Kevin seven hours. I had to drive an hour out to his house and back and then I had stopped on the way home to get me something to eat and then I stopped before I got home to drop off the quilt for the lady that I finished that custom quilt for. Um, you know, I, I, um, I get asked, do you custom quilt? I don't like to, I only custom quilted this quilt because it was a pattern of mine. Um, custom quilting takes a lot of time. And then when you start talking to people about what, what the price of it really costs. So say, let's just do an example. You have a quilt that's a hundred inches by a hundred inches, just to make these numbers easy. If I quilt your quilt, at two inches per square inch, that's gonna cost you $200 for an edge to edge panto, okay? When you start talking about you want custom quilting, and it depends on how much custom quilting are you talking about. I go up to three cents per, for custom quilting if you just want me to like go around something in the center square, skip that area, 
and just outline stitch it or something like that because now I've broken up my panto so I've got all of these stops I got to do every time that particular area runs into the panto so I have to stop and um, it takes longer to do that and uh, I do that's three cents four cents is when I'm doing something where you just want something different in the outer border but the inside is the same and the reason why I charge more for that is because I have to roll when I'm doing that outer border every about 13 14 inches I got to roll so that I'm not having constant thread startups and stops and that's for every border this quilt had four borders on it um, and then I do five cents for a total custom and then outlining your borders and stuff like that with stitch in the ditch or a quarter inch stitch away or whatever it is that you want me to do. Um, now, if, a, if it's $200 straight panto, I was even nice and gave her a $50 discount because it was my pattern off of her. And I only charged her three cents when I should have been charging her four cents. But a lot of people uh, don't want to pay for custom quilting, but yet they want custom quilting. So in order for me to avoid giving somebody like a $500 bill <laughs> just for quilting your custom quilt, I just don't like to do it. Uh, I prefer not to do custom quilting. Only on my own quilts. And sometimes I don't even want to do them on my own. Ain't that crazy? It takes a long time. Her quilt was on my machine for about four or five days. That means I can't do anything else either. <laughs> the gift was so sweet. It shows that most people appreciate you and some are just poop heads. <laughs> That's from Sue. <laughs> Sue works with, <laughs> works with dogs. <laughs> uh, hey, Jonah Crutchfield. <laughs> Doris O is here as well, saying Happy New Year to people. Bonita Nance is here. Shaquita Pearson. Uh, Wendy Teaser says, I know people that charge an hourly rate, $15 to $20 for custom quilting. And that's right. And that's what I, I'm like getting to the point where it's like, okay, maybe I need to, I do charge $20 for my hourly rate when people start asking me if I put bindings on quilt. Do you want me to do it by hand? You want me to do it by machine? And I just charge. So if you want to sit here and pay me um, four hours, two it takes me about two and two and a half hours on a bed size quilt to do hand stitching, the binding to the back. If you want to pay me that, I'm okay with it. But if not, then let's keep it moving. <laughs> so yeah, I do charge by the hour on certain things. But most of the time in our area, we are like, you know, it depends on your area where you quilt to. Like, do you charge per square inch? Do you charge per square yard? You know, stuff like that or per yard, not square yard, but per yard. Uh, but yeah, so we charge per square inch here. That's how our rates here are. So you can see if it's comparable to work that you're going to get from one place to the next. But. I don't like it because it's stressful for me when I know people don't want to pay for it and I got to give you a bill and then, I, you know, I've done a lot of extra work and then you don't really want to pay me. And I could have had that quilt off my machine in a day if I was doing just straight edge to edge and I was constantly doing it. Uh, even if it's a, it was like 104 and a half inches by 105 and a half inches. So that's what the measurements were on that quilt. Alvita says, good evening, Miss T and all quilters. Hi, Alvita. Wash your hands is here going, hi, y'all. <laughs> ah, that is funny. Um, let me see. I must have missed some stuff. Vicky's going to have a root beer float. She's cheating. <laughs> then Molly says, you are a kind and understanding person, and you deserve to be treated with respect and pay for your skill um gift hi Rhonda Boilo yeah people don't see it like that when it's time for them to pay though so I like I said I've had I've had a very weird day <laughs> um my brother just came in here saying hi sis and everyone stay safe <laughs> Vicky says she can cheat. She's only 103 pounds. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, Betsy says, I let my long armor choose to panto, wink, wink. <laughs> she does. I when, when I first get new customers and they go, you can just quit whatever. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I send them emails anyway. And now I know Betsy really don't care. And she's she's she know what I can do with her quilt as well. And she know I'll treat it like it's mine. So uh, she just like, whatever you put on it, I'm fine. I'm like, OK. So I kind of look at quilts sometime and see you know, what I feel would be good on them as well. When I quilt for the same person, I try to go back into my records and see if I can find what pantos I've used before. So I try to use something different. And then if that way, if they want the same thing, they can tell me, use the same one that you put on such and such quilt. So I'm able to do that. I try to keep records of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, Remo JS is warning, kind of giving people a warning that the mat that sells at Joann's, the white, and has the blue numbers or red markings or off by an eighth of an inch. Quilt shop realized when customer um, bought back and remeasured. Uh, I love my job pays me, and I prefer to properly pay for services that I receive. Yes. And that's the thing. It's always... You have so many people that when it's on when they're on the receiving end of something, they want the best. <laughs> they want you to want to be given the most. And when they're on the paying end, it's like it completely changes. Just like some of my family members think that I can make a quilt for fifty dollars. It's like I don't know where they do that at. <laughs> so <laughs> Sue talking about a root beer float sounds fantastic. Go to Ted Drew's and get one, Sue. <laughs> Paula S says, good evening, tea and quilting friends. Beautiful African fabric. Well, thank you. Um, if you don't have a long arm machine, can one use the regular machine to make design on your quilt? Yes, it just takes skill to learn how to free motion quilt if you're trying to do a design other than straight line stitching. If you are trying to do feathers or flowers you're going to most likely have to be doing that with free motion quilting another option that you can quilt your quilts with is if you have a machine that embroiders you they also have machine embroidery designs that you can put on a quilt and you just have to keep hooping for everything um and then there are some that are continuous that will line you up to the next design and some of them they're just drop and plop quilting designs so it just depends on your skill level what you got and what you're willing to pay for. <laughs> so yes, thanks Stephanie. She's reminding people to also hit that thumbs up button. I started with something else. I am working, continuing to work on the Bonnie Hunter uh, mysteries. I didn't start back on this until today. Trying to make sure that's right. I do have, uh, I had, um, I'm not giving you the total number of blocks that we need but I have made 12 of these blocks so far I'm still making these blocks so this is what I'm trying to finish up right now um, she doesn't want like numbers being given out on what the total things are but if you haven't done the uh, haven't downloaded the clues they're still on her blog you can go to quiltbill.com and uh, just click on the word blog and it'll take you over to her blog and you can get the mystery quilt on Friday, I think we're going to be on part eight, if I'm not mistaken. I still am working on part five, six, and seven. Okay, I'm doing them. I figured this one was easy because I just had to cut um, rectangles and squares. These squares, these rectangles. That was the only thing I had to cut. So I'm trying to put these blocks together. Um, my other clue, I only got uh, eight. Let me see. One, two, three. Seven, and I think I got the eighth block in the in the basket. I got eight of the blocks that were due in clue six done, okay? So I'm doing five and six together at the same time. And I've been waiting on my small Doug's Zico ruler where you can do the, the flip corner thing, the snowball corner. Um, uh, it keeps getting pushed back on when I'm actually going to receive the package. I got the big ruler, but... 
since I'm here in this little space, I prefer to use the small ruler. And the uh, small ruler hasn't come yet. The big ruler came last week. Um, let's see. If you don't have a... Oh. Uh, oh, and... um. You can also use stencils to make designs in your quilt. You can use stencils, but you're still going to have to do some free motion quilting. And that's a skill you've got to learn if you're trying to do anything other than straight lines. But stencils are good. I even use stencils for straight lines when I want to get me a, a starting mark. I'll use stencils. Even on my long arm machine, I use uh, stencils for that. I'll use some chalk. <laughs> Uh, wash your hands says, yep, just thumbs up. And people are uh, telling Winifred that uh, use YouTube videos. There are lots of videos on using home machines. That's how I first learned, yes. And I quilted long arm, I mean not long arm, my machine quilted for years on, on my Singer XL1000. That was the machine that I had set up for free motion quilting. That's the one I like free motion quilting on the best. Um, and so that's what I kind of did. I have a machine I piece on, machines I embroider on. And then if I need two embroidered machines, I'll em both of the machines that I'm using here will embroider. And uh, even before I had the Bernina here, my uh, Baby Lock Elagio, it would also, it was also an embroidery unit. So uh, I have machines set up to do different things. So that way I'm not changing all the feet all the time. I stitched on this machine when I first got it just to put it through its paces, straight stitch. And then ever since I've set it up as machine embroidery, I haven't sewn another uh, stitch where I'm guiding fabric through. It's all machine embroidery. <laughs> uh, Deborah Holloway is here saying good evening. Hi, Deborah. And how wide is the throat on your home machine may be a challenge. Yes, and that's the other thing, different... Machines have come out in newer years with longer throats. Um, on this Bernina, I have no intentions of doing much machine quilting. So I end up stacking pieces. I put my stuff in here. You all saw I had the mail stacked in here before we even started. <laughs> I don't mess around uh, with this arm. I, ain't, I don't need this much space. This is a lot of space in here. But I won't be using it because I'm not going to ever quote anything that big on it. So, yes, part eight is Friday for Bonnie's uh, mystery. I'm working on it now, too. Same uh, blocks as you are. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Remo says, I'm doing so many quilt loans. Thank you, Miss T. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's a lot going on right now. Lizette Zayas is here. How you doing? And welcome. How are you doing and welcome? Paula's asking, do you have suggestions for someone who loves to make quilt tops but doesn't like quilting? I have five or six quilt tops to be quilted on the East Coast. And um, I, I, I'm actually that person because I love piecing. Uh, I could care less about the other parts of it. I find that I'm, I'm more of a, I like doing more traditional piecing. And I do other stuff. I do hand applique at times. I do paper piecing. But I just love uh, piecing, period. And that's what I like to do. I have over 50 tops myself that I need to get quilted. But part of that is because I'm also a business <laughs> and I'm doing other stuff. I'm doing YouTube videos. I'm doing um, quilting for others, I'm selling stuff. I'm doing lectures, quilt shops. And the new thing I didn't even tell you all about is I'm, I'm going to be a quilt judge. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be judging a quilt show uh, this year. And that's, you know, everything that's happening right now is contingent upon what's happening in the world. So a lot of stuff could be canceled. We don't know what, what situation we're in. I know my uh, quilt guild, they canceled this month's meeting. And they might cancel February's meeting too. So, but, you know, it's all contingent. It's okay. You have, do what you like to do and then pay for somebody else to do it. You can ship your quilts to me. I do quilting for some people that ship their quilts and I ship them back to them. Um, so I'm okay with that. If you don't want to quilt, don't quilt. If you got to get them done, just do basic overall grids. I've talked about um, that serpentine stitch that's on most sewing machines where it's a real tight S. But if you increase the stitch length, 
and do it on a piece of practice or you can increase your stitch length and then see if you need to reduce your tensions or not. It just makes this a uh, real flowy little curvy S. And you just randomly put those into the quilt about every inch and a half to two inches. You can go one way, you can go both ways, you can go diagonally one way or both ways. It, it quilts up pretty and give you very nice texture on your quilts. And you can do that with the Feed Dogs Up. And you can use a walking foot if you want. I'm not a fan of a walking foot. My previous machines, I just didn't like how the walking foot worked. I have never tried a walking foot on this machine, and I've never tried one on that machine. So I can't really tell you about my uh, newer machines. But I know when I was doing uh, quilting on my domestic sewing machine, I didn't like walking foots and didn't use them. Sue says, doesn't it irritate you when you perform a service and a client wants to play like, let's make a deal? <laughs> right, and I even mentioned it when I said, how do you want this quilt? Because I'm thinking she's going to tell me I want some florals or, you know, like what type of panto, or, that's what, or geometric. And she goes, well, I want little curves. I want something to come up in these triangles. And then you can kind of do whatever in these strings. And, but, you know, and it was a column quilt. So when she said these triangles, I'm like, it was uh, like seven rows of triangles and they got triangles on both sides. So it's like 14 rows of triangles. I'm like, she wants this custom quilted. <laughs> but she don't want to call it custom quilted, okay? All right, I can't hang. Oh, Tiff, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for coming in here. We appreciate it. And uh, I can't believe you come in here listening to this garbage when you have a headache. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I need total silence when I have a headache, especially a migraine level. Uh, Bonita says, I love that ruler cuts down a lot of time. Yes, and that's where I got these little small pieces from that I've been chain piecing on from cutting those. And I've just been putting them to the side to stitch up later. Now, if I had drew the line, I would have stitched them both. At the same time, I would have draw I would have draw the line corner to corner, and then I would have draw the line a half inch away, and I would have stitched them both. I wouldn't have these, but it does save time when you've got a lot to do and I'm behind. I can go ahead and get this done. This is an accurate cut, so I don't have to worry about the pieces uh, not lining up later. So I do like that ruler. She's talking about the ruler I'm waiting for. I just want the small one because I'm in a small area, and the big ruler I got to keep turning it in this area right here I'm I got a sew pad that's an iron pad right here on my desk right now so trying to do both in the same area Wendy says I need to get more background fabric to finish this week's clue I had just enough to make the block for this but need to get more for the extras we didn't need for the week yeah so she'll tell you cut this many and then she'll say you make uh, use this many of them this clue and then the next time she'll tell you to use something in another clue so yeah but i got plenty of fabric all i, I had ran out of what i pulled i didn't have enough uh, variety when i got to this final clue so i just went in to another area and just pulled out some more scraps i got plenty of scraps <laughs> uh, i will never run out of that i guess <laughs> Uh, Remo is also referring to Angela Walters on YouTube. She is teaching on home machines, so that's good to know. I haven't been following her, but she has some great uh, ones where she does machine quilting as well. I have a, about two of Angela's books, and I like them because she does, uh, she does more realistic quilting that any quilter can do. You don't have to be artistic per se. And then sometimes when I'm just quilting, I just run out of ideas and it's like, okay, what can I put here? And I just go open up her book and pick one of her field patterns. And then I go, okay, I can do that. And, and so I can keep moving. Because sometimes I'll spend a whole day just trying to figure out what to quilt on a custom quilt. <laughs> so she's really good. I have an old Foth Creative uh, 1471 and it free motions quilts like a dream. Yes, my other machines, not so much. Yes, and that's what I say. Whenever you have machines and you're struggling, a free motion quilting or quilting in a ditch on one machine and you've got more than one machine, please try them all and make sure you read your manual because what was different on the Singer that I like to machine quilt on was that it told me to increase my stitch length all the way up to five, I think, was the top that it would go to at the time on that machine. And it sounds crazy because I got my feed dogs down. Why do I need to increase stitch length? 
Well, if I didn't, that thread was really, really tight. And when I did, it stitched out perfect like a dream. And it sounds so crazy that if your feed dogs are down, the stitch length should not even matter. But on that singer, it did. So make sure when you are free motion quilting that you are looking at your books and making sure that you've got all the settings set where they're supposed to be. So uh, that's a good um, tip. Wash your hands. And somebody's referring to Lisa Capine. I finished my second blocks today. That's Lietta talking about the Bonnie Hunter mystery. Deborah says, congratulations, T. Thank you. I don't know what for now. <laughs> Shirley Royal is here. Hi, Shirley. Welcome. Mary George. It says that she used the same fob as a wash your hands, 1471. Um, oh, on the judging. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be a cool judge. So this is going to be interesting. I do know when I go to shows, I do know what I like, but I will try to fine tune and not just pick my own personal like. And I do know a very well made quilt when I see it. So uh, that's easy. That's the easy part. And then I got a friend who, um, used to judge this particular show and so she, she was the one that asked me if I would do it and I said as long as you give me what your techniques were or what your criteria was and so she said she will and I ain't worried about it right now I wait till it get closer because like I said I do know a good quilt when I see it I just need to know um if she did any forms or anything like that how how did that whole process work because I've never done it before and what do do I need to bring anything other than a clipboard <laughs> i'm like congratulations for what i don't forget i told you <laughs> yes to my stephanie talking about judge t <laughs> francis is here says i learned to free motion quilt by looking at youtube i like to do my own quilting on my quilt tops and some people do some people want to be the one that's in control of everything and that's why when I first get new people, because if I don't know who you are and what, you know, you don't know what I do, I try to get people, you don't lose control of your quilt when you send it in to a lawn warmer. Because a lot of people feel like they lose control, but I try to make sure people can pick designs or send them designs to choose from, things like that. But you are correct. Some people want to do the whole thing, and that's great. A lot of people use lawn warm quilters and don't give them credit on the labels. <laughs> I'm okay with that, too. I, I got paid. Um... You know, if you want to take credit for the quilting, I guess that's fine, <laughs> but it's okay. I've had that happen in a many of quilt shows where somebody else quilted a quilt and on the tag, it's only got that one person's name on it. And not that it happened to me. I haven't seen it happen to me. I'm talking about, I've seen it happen to other people. Janice says, I like for my quilter to quilt according to the quilt block. I am never disappointed with her work. Pay for a job well done. Yes. And, and that, again, is custom quilting. And some people, they can hand, uh, like, uh, I know Tiff does a lot of it, where she hand does a lot of custom work in the quilt blocks. I did that on my solstice quilt, where I did a whole lot of, I did a different background in every block. Uh, every quilt block, I put a different background feel, and then I quilted according to the uh, piece block, because it was a sampler quilt. So it just takes time to do that, that's all. Wash your hands. I'm currently making a quilt using Heat Bond Ultra. Oh my God, you can't stitch through that. I wonder how it will survive the wash. I will, I haven't washed a quilt. Uh, most of the time when you're using Heat and Bond Ultra, it's normally on quilts that you're not gonna wash. They're mostly wall hangings. That's where I used it. I only have used it once on purpose and I have accidentally used it, not realizing because the red line was off and put it on a piece of, um, fusible onto a piece of fabric and when you try to stitch through that stuff all that uh, glue and gunk gets caught up in your um it gets caught up in the um in the needle like it gums up your needle and then all of a sudden you get to the point where you can't stitch at all if you're trying to stitch through heat and bond ultra so you definitely don't want to stitch through that's why you always want to get a lightweight if you're going to try to do buttonhole stitch on the edge. 
when I did heat and bond, what I did was I quilted my background fabric, my quilt top before I put any appliques on. I quilted the background first. And then I put all those appliques on top. And then I have never washed it. And I have, it's a Christmas quilt. And it's folded most of the time in storage. And I pull it out. I may just run the iron over just to get out any hard uh, lines if I need to from being there all year. But uh, it has, it's been there for years. I know the quilt's over 15 years old. And now one piece of that heat and bond is even thinking about healing, uh, peeling up from that ultra. That's some, that's some stuff right there. <laughs> oh, I had a, uh, I forgot, T90 Roberts asked me if you have 30 blocks in a quilt for this uh, take five. She's saying, what size would that quilt be? That quilt would be uh, 60 by 72. So that's why I added in another row on mine to make it 72 inches square before I put borders. I tend to make my pillow top queen size bed needs a square quilt for me it's different for everybody's bed so i tend to make square quilts if i'm making um, a, a quilt for my bed diane 57 is here Teresa says congratulations judge t that's so exciting yes and i'll try to see if i can videotape some of it i've been to this uh gills show before they're in um cape Girardeau, missouri I've been to their show and recorded it before, so I'll try to see if I can take some uh, photos of me judging or just set a camera on a tripod or something. Not necessarily, probably going to have time to talk to it a whole lot. And then I might, uh, the next day, go back and take, um, uh, you know, video record the show for you guys. If it happens, because, you know, stuff could change. <laughs> Woo-hoo-wee. And Diane says she likes her walking foot. As always, T, your advice and suggestions are great. Thank you, Paula. Um, Sue is asking, what ruler is that? It's uh, the snowball. I don't have it in here. It's already 8.05. I'm over time. I should be off, guys. <laughs> Let me go get it because uh, I forgot what the name is. Mm. Simple folded corners. <laughs> Let me show it to you, though. And this is the larger ruler. I ordered them both because they told me that the other one was going to be 10 days coming. And I'm like, maybe they won't. Um, so I ordered the small one anyway. And the, they were correct. The large one came first and the small one I haven't seen high nor hair of. Doug Lico Simple Folded Corners. And it's for doing those uh, snowball corners. So this is what you're looking for. I ordered these on Amazon. And they, this is the large one. Um, let me see what they say about... I don't see anything like what they're saying about size. Like what's the largest corner you can snowball, I guess, would be six inches. Uh, maybe six inches <laughs> um, I had taken this out because I was just reading the information on it and then this ruler is this big and I'm working with a small square so I didn't want to uh, work with it this big so it has a angle here and then you've got these sides here that you use to square up depending on the size that you're squaring up to so that's what it is I'm just waiting for that small one to come in on that. <laughs> uh oh. And Remo talking about, I agree with Miss T. Family is a mess. I can give a price and they pay. I am a timekeeper, I keep delivery time. <laughs> uh. 
Um, prayers and hugs for Diane, too. Too much stress from the neighbors. Oh, my God. See, that's why I'm not even friends with mine. I know my uh, friend Deborah Quilts, when she's in here, she friends with all her neighbors all up and down the street. And I, I, I just wave at mine and say hello. Keep it moving. I got one couple that I talk to. Uh, but if we not even best friends, I wouldn't even go ask them for sugar, okay? I keep it because I, I used to live in apartment complexes. And people would be knocking on the door talking about, do you got sugar for their Kool-Aid? I'm like, okay, you need two cups of sugar for that Kool-Aid and you pay like 10 cents for the Kool-Aid? <laughs> Come on. Mm -mm, I'm not into that. Oh, the other customer. Okay, that's what Remo meant. Okay. Aaron says, Leah Day also teaches free motion quilting on your home machine. Yeah, and she was another one. She has a lot of videos showing you how to do stuff, but she... Her beginning, like her, if you start at video number one, they're more simplistic. But she does very detailed design stuff that I don't know if you're going to want if you're a new quilter, new person free motion quilting. Denise is also reminding you all to hit that thumbs up button before we leave. We're going to be leaving out of here. Where do you get that book to buy? Um... I think she's talking about Angela Walters books. You can buy them anywhere. I just Google Angela Walters. I think I think she was with CNT Publishing maybe at the time or because I would order straight from the publisher site or I can't remember the name of the other publishing place for uh, quilt books. Time, it's not Timeless Treasures, that's Fabric. <laughs> I can't remember the other company name, but if you Google Angela Water, Waters, her books will come up. I don't sell her books. Oh, she says, I got to come and visit and sew with you one day, T. I miss your Longhorn videos. And I, like I said, I did record and I even did, I thought I did some recording. I got, I opened up this GoPro and it's got this little bitty thing in there and I don't know how to get that data to my computer. I ordered some adapters. Apparently, I ordered the wrong thing from Amazon, so I got to go to the store and the Walmart and stuff like that that I go to. It's a good little chunk of a ride, and so now I got to go out of my way to go to the store to try to make sure I take this thing to the store so that I get the right thing that I need because what I just got, I don't know what the heck that stuff is. They just took my money. <laughs> they just took my money. Good night, Kathy. Uh, Paula said, yes, congrats on being a judge. Better. Two deaths since Sundays. This is too much COVID. Yep, it's a lot still going on. Oh, my God. They had to call the cops on the neighbors? Oh, my goodness. Hey, Carrie Richard. <laughs> um, thank you, Lenora. In my opinion, the Fall 1471 is one of the best machines Fall ever made. That's Sue. And Deborah says, I'm learning that I like quilters. You're going, that's also another option. I've done that a couple of times. And I actually love quilters. You go, I've never made a video because I don't do it a whole lot. And so I, I mostly have done that with machine embroidery because we were, had, you know, you were doing like quilt blocks and they had the batting and the backing already included. I'm like, okay, let's just go ahead and do quilters. You go, and it's like Anita Good Design does that. Embroideries and machine designs, which is uh, with what's Eileen's Eileen something. <laughs> Can't remember her last name right now. It begins with an S, I think Sullivan maybe. I don't know, but she does a lot of uh, machine quilting as you go. So I do like that. And the Devitos here saying hi to everyone from Florida. Um. And Julie's saying that's a good idea, T. We'll quilt first and applique. Yes, anytime you're using that ultra uh, uh, heat and bond ultra, you are not going to want to stitch through that, honey. And you don't need to. I'm telling you, mine has been done over 15 years, and that stuff ain't even thinking about coming up. I always put my long armor's name. She was surprised. I guess not everyone does, so you are correct. And she says, I need to work on quilting more of my quilts, but after lap size, they just get too big. Yeah. 
And it depends on if you've got a nice quilt and you don't want to mess it up because you're not prolific and can't do a big size queen size quilt on your machine and you want to make sure your quilt stays nice, that's the time to send your stuff out. If you've done a lot of work on piecing, fabric costs a lot of money, a couple hundred more dollars to send your stuff out to get it quilted is not going to kill you. You may not like it, but it's going to make sure that your quilt stays nice. There are times when it's just time to send it out. On this quilt here, it can just take simple uh, quilting on that. You can do that with that um, uh, S, the serpentine stitch I was talking about. I call it the S stitch. <laughs> I'm not reading all of your stuff, Diane, because I don't want YouTube to censor me. <laughs> and wash your hands also saying thank you. You're welcome. Every tree, do we need to call you your honor? <laughs> she is too funny. So go away. <laughs> it's 10 p.m. where Lenora is. That's pretty cool. Um. I'll have to, Lenora, I'll have to, if, if you're wanting 30 blocks from me, I only got 15 fabrics. That means you're going to have two cuts of one fabric. So instead of having just five pieces in your, so every 15, you're getting 75 pieces of fabric. You have five fabrics in there that are cut from the same fabric. They're different sizes, though. You got three different sizes on those five cuts. If you're ordering a 30 kit and I only got 15 fabrics right now, that means you're going to be getting duplicates. And that will still work with this because, because this pattern was made to only use five fabrics. And I'm using 15 because <laughs> I can't do five fabric quilts. So you'll still be okay. I just need you to know that you're going to have duplicates. So I'll have to um, package up your order for you and then I'll have to email you once I can see what it would cost to ship to you. So then I'll email you at that time to let you know what's going on. Uh, and then people are saying they love the Doug ruler. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, wash your hands. Says AccuQuilt has a snowball die, but it's this is working with this is in a Bonnie Hunter's mystery, and it's not a square that we're snowballing here. And you're not going to always be able to use the die to snowball. We're working right now with half square triangles, <laughs> so they don't have a die that snowballs a half square triangle. So yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, Darlene, just reminding people before we go to give T a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when T will be on. Thank you. Yes. And like I said, I have video coming for this. I'm going to show you how to shuffle your fabrics. That's going to be the first video on this. Uh, if you bought one of those African kits. And then I'm also going to, I've gone to, done a video on just piecing my blocks too. And I'm trying to figure out how am I going to lay this quilt out because I have no place big enough. But I, maybe I'll just lay out a few blocks and just go from there. Just show you all with a few blocks what different layouts you can do with it and call it a day. <laughs> they talking about, yeah, keep the recorder on for the whole thing while I'm doing the, um, well, till the batteries run out at least, right? <laughs> uh, T, do you ever think about designing your own quilting ruler? I have thought about, because I, I went to a place when I went to the retreat in October, I stopped at a store and they had their own brand of rulers. And I asked them who made their rulers and they did give me the contact information. And I just don't know like what ruler I would want uh, to, to use at this point. So, yes, I have thought about uh, ha making a ruler. So I have to figure out which ruler I want them to make. I don't know if I want to do a scrub ruler or something like that. So. I'm trying to decide. So in that interim, I have not made any or decided anything because I want to make sure it's what I really want. So it's in the brain. Um, you didn't get a USB cable with the GoPro? I don't remember. I go back and look in the box. Uh, I don't even see anywhere on the device where I can plug in any type of USB because I'm like, maybe I just plug this thing straight into my 
I got the GoPro 10. So I just need to go back and do some. I, I got um I got a battery and I got the um re, the little car thing. And I wasn't even thinking about that when I put it into the machine. That's been months ago. And then I go and do some recording and I open it up so I can pop this thing in my computer. And it's like, girl, that ain't going in there. It's going to get lost. <laughs> I'll never see it again. <laughs> but I'll go back and look, Eric. But I, I didn't see any card. I don't even see a place on the machine that I can put in a USB cable. But I'll look again. Hi, Deborah Sims Brown, Lynette Williams. We are about to leave, guys. I've been in here an hour. I'm actually over, and I want to go eat and then watch a little bit of television, and I got to go work all night. But it says, I'm teaching a quilt as you go class at the end of the month for one of my quilt groups. Now, that's pretty cool. And I love the quilt as you go. It's really neat, and you can do it different design options you can make the back of your quilt another design element based on how you set up your back you know the background fabric on your blocks it's pretty cool awesome good luck uh bonita do you sell any quilts on your site i'm looking for a quilt for a queen size bed my problem is yes i will be selling some quilts uh, I, I've been, got so much other stuff pulled out because I've been working on organizing stuff, but then I get busy all year in 2021. I started this crap last January and still don't have it together. And then, like I told you all, I had my friend um, Diana passed who was a quilter. And so then I brought some of her stuff and that didn't help either when I had already pulled stuff out. And then I go bring somebody else's stuff in here too. So I'm having difficulties with that. But one of my goals in the spring because i don't want to do it when it's hot it was too hot we didn't have a real spring last year in st louis it was and it was too windy like if i had taken stuff outside it would have been blowing all over my yard and what i want to do is i want to just make tables and i want to i'm going to go through my lecture quilts a lot of my lecture quilts have never even been washed because when i do quilts for lectures i never wash them because they're going to have to be washed after the fact anyway and so I never wash them because I'm not putting them on the beds because they're lecture quilts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through those because I rotate through my lecture quilts. And I will be having some quilts for sale. I thought I would have them already up by now because I've been asked by people that want a quilt made by me. And I just haven't had time because I have to pull everything out of storage. And then I want to re uh load them based on the lecture that they're going to go in so i have to have my lecture sheets all printed out to make sure i don't sell a quilt that's in a lecture <laughs> that's the thing and so i have to be very organized and i need a lot of space to do that and i have a huge deck and so uh, eventually when i do that i'll probably have kevin come over and help me with that as well but i do plan to Your Honor T, I'm guilty of hoarding fabric. <laughs> yes, we all are. <laughs> uh, thank you, Stephanie. She's on people to hit that thumbs up button. <laughs> I'm hoarding, collecting. A lot of y'all are saying in the chat. Rulers for uh, bag making would be awesome. Rulers for bag making. Um, tell me what you're thinking about. Like, are you talking about when you cut out the corners or like cutting out a whole, the whole bag? That's a big ruler. Um, and I missed the Zoom uh, on Sunday. I was so tired when I got in here that I just couldn't do it. I fell in, the, I ate my food that I had got on the way home. And then I had dropped off that lady's quilt, so that made, and I told her I wasn't coming in, but then I found myself in her house anyway. And then um, she going over the quilt and stuff like that. And then uh, by the time I got home and ate, I was so tired, I fell asleep. I said, I can't do it. I mean, we know we don't know how to get off Zoom. The GoPro has a USB outlet on the side, but it's not visible. You have to flip open the side panel. And I've been trying to flip that thing open, like one side, it, it opens and I can put the battery in. The other side, I'm like, maybe it doesn't open. 
So I'll do that because maybe I got a something adapter. Even if I don't know the one they got, I got something that'll fit. Thanks, T. This was fun from Julie. Hey, Julie. Thank you. Um, she's asking me for a quilt, Diane, not Tiffany. <laughs> Uh, Paula, T, do you have solids in your kit or do I have to buy? you? I don't have solids in these kits because most African prints are not solid. Um, what I hard to do is get different scales of prints. But what I do, like in one of my Take 5 videos, I do tell you to use, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a, you cut one inch sashing strips that you're gonna put in between your units. And the, uh, the Take 5 videos are very short. So you can look at those. Have you ever used the good measure rulers? No, I haven't. The whole bag, so maybe five different rulers for all the pieces. Okay, that's what she's talking about. And Eric says, no worry, T. We all figured you were tired, but we had someone from Australia join. Oh, my God. Who was that? <laughs> Do you remember her name, Eric? Um, and, and Remo is correct. It is very hard to open the GoPro. And then when you put the, because I have to hook it up to my machine, so you have to screw on this uh, connector that goes into the grips that hold it onto the long arm. And I have to sometimes take that off to even get the battery compartment open because the thing stick, the little screw thing you turn sticks out over the frame. So, yeah. <laughs> Diane 57. I, I get you, girl. It's okay. <laughs> good night, T and everyone. That's from Craft With Love. It was always good with Miss T. Thank you. Her name was Karen. Yes, Karen uh, is one of my diehard followers, and I'm so sad now that I missed her in the live. Thank you. She's always ordering stuff, and she I, I will send it over to her because I'm one of the few people in the USA that will uh, ship to Australia. A lot of companies will not ship overseas, especially small companies. They won't ship. And it is a pain in the butt to ship overseas. Again, I am not in this to make money. I do not plan to be rich off of the t quilts entity. The reason why I have the t quilts entity is because the government has made me want pay taxes. And so in order for me to write this stuff off, I had to uh, make a business for myself. But I'm not here trying to make money. Money is not the motivator for me. So it does take time and uh, I have to really drop those off and make sure that they get checked at the post office. I can't just like put those in the box. I could, but I have to make sure everything's right on those. The one in smashing made the take five, sashing made the take five quilt stunning, yes. And I just didn't, I just wanted to get this video quickly done. If I was doing the sashings, it would have taken way too long and then I wouldn't have done it. See, that's exactly why I was not messing with you, Eric, because it says they were on to 3 a.m. Central Standard Time and I couldn't do it. I slept right through the dog grooming appointment. I missed the dog grooming appointment, okay? Trey is here saying, hi, TNT. Quilters, we miss you guys so much. Hope everyone is healthy, happy, and uh, quilting daily. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get off of here. So welcome and goodbye. <laughs> I need to go eat. This is the night I really watch television, so I've already missed a half hour of my program. And uh, I want to, uh, I got to do some work tonight. So I do need to go because I got stuff I need to do. <laughs> I see you wash your hands. Uh, my brother saying good night, everyone. Stay safe. I'm going to leave with that too. Everybody, good night. Stay safe and be blessed, everybody. Quilt out. <laughs>